Hi, I'm Abby. I'm Amy. And I'm Emma. You're listening to a clip from the Read It Forward podcast. And if you'd like to hear more, you can find us at readitforward.com slash podcast or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Enjoy. I'm here with Fatima Farkin Mirza. Welcome. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So you are the author of this incredible novel coming out in June called A Place for Us. For those who haven't read it yet, would you just give us a quick um, synopsis? Tell us a little bit about where we are and, and who we're meeting in this book. The novel begins when the youngest child of this family and the only son, Amar, has returned to attend his sister's wedding. So it begins right as the wedding is beginning. And so readers don't know why he ran away or what it means that he's come home. And so from there, the novel will then show us moments in the family's past that answer that question, why he left, what it means that he's back. Yeah. On that, why did you decide to write this story with a timeline that jumps around? I loved that you trusted your reader to follow along and figure out, okay, how old are they? Where are they? Because I did. I felt I followed along. But I'm like, oh, this is cool. There's no like 1990, you know, setting the scene for us. Right. That was really hard for me to figure out how can I, without saying 1990, 1995, how can I ground um, readers in the time? And there are little clues in each section that helps us ground them. Like one of the ages will be mentioned or whatever grade the one of the characters might be in will be mentioned. But I... It wasn't a conscious decision that I would be jumping around in time. I was writing because I knew only one thing about the the family before I began, which is that they're gathered together for this wedding. And at some point during the wedding, they're getting ready to take the family photograph at the end of the wedding. And they're waiting to see if their son will make it. And they're all a little bit anxious and and worried that perhaps he won't make it. And so that moment was what I wanted to figure out. And I knew very quickly that the novel wasn't going to be only about the wedding and what happens after, but that the real story for me was trying to figure out what part did all of these family members have in that moment and in making that moment possible. And so from there, I, I kind of wrote in order to explore for myself. There's tons of those past sections that didn't make it to the final draft, but they were just, each of them was a way for me to kind of answer that question. And what I realized that was happening in in those scenes was that the characters were narrowing in on a moment where they made a decision Mm -hmm. that that somehow would reverberate throughout their life. I didn't know that I would be moving around in time. I was just trying to figure out, like, what happened to them. And yeah. then when I had all these different sections, I had to figure out, like, will this work? How can it work? Yeah. Well, one of the things that I found most compelling about this book is the sort of spider web of relationships between the people, the different people in the family. So you have these three siblings who... They all take various roles. You know, one is really driven. One Mm -hmm. is more of a teacher. You know, God love Amar. He's Mm -hmm. really like the rebellious one that's looking for his spot in the family. And then we have these parental child relationships, too. I mean, I recognized the mother-son closeness because I think, you know, my mom and my brother are very close. Mm -hmm. And, um, And then sort of the way that the father looks out for his daughter. So what was it like, you know, did you have a web for yourself as you wrote about, you know, each character and how they relate to one another? No, but what I was really interested in was I knew that I wanted it to be a novel that explored the different kinds of loves in one's life. And of course, there is romantic love that is also present in it. But I also wanted to know what are the dimensions or what are the complexities of other kinds of loves that are as big in one's life, like the love that a sister has for her brother or a mother has for her son or um, a mother has for her daughter or a daughter has for her father. And so I think that the other fun thing about the novel was that I was able to inhabit the different points of view. So depending on which other character is in the scene, that was the relationship that was explored. So sometimes it is Hadia who's just had a fight with her father, and that's the main relationship that's being explored. And other times it is Hadia who's feeling hurt by her mother. And then that is, you know, so it's not just Amar and his relationships with his family, um, but it is 
Yeah, it's happening on all of these different planes all at one time, which Mm -hmm. is, you know, real life. So where did this family first come to you? Did you have a like a seed of inspiration for this book? Yeah, the image that I was talking about a little bit earlier was the first thing that came to my mind, just this family that's gathered together and they're standing on the stage because it's their daughter's wedding and I knew that she's the eldest daughter and they're about to take the photograph that will go into the family album and also I knew that the mother, it was really important for the mother to have the photograph be taken because she wanted it to replace another photograph and so then when I, when I knew that the family was looking around to see you know where is our son, for me so many questions came from that. Like why does she want to replace the photograph? Yeah. And is there anything that's autobiographical in this novel Mm -hmm. or um, just completely, you know, invented? I don't think anything can be completely invented. (laughs) Um, At the same time, it's both a novel that's deeply, deeply personal to me and one that doesn't look anything like my life when you consider the facts of my life or in the novel it would be the plot points. Yeah. So the way that I think about it is that the novel is not autobiographical because the characters really did take on their own lives and they really did act in ways that I never acted mm-hmm. or um, but the through those characters like the heart of it in some ways is very personal mm-hmm. or through their the questions that they're asking as they interact with one another or think about their own lives it was the the very questions that I have been asking in some ways my whole life without being really aware of it until I started writing. So we see a lot of young love in this book. And do you think for your characters, I'll say, are the attractions that they form as young people somehow stronger or more formative um, than the ones they form later in life? I don't think that I don't know if they're stronger or more formative, but they do have their own quality that can never be recreated later on in life, that that exists in its own sphere. Um, emotionally for the characters and I think that they think about that too like Amar when he's thinking about Amira he's like oh sh- my love for her exists in its own will always exist in its own plane yeah oh I love that um so your book is the first to be in um Sarah Jessica Parker's SJP for Hogarth imprint what is it like working with her what is she like as a reader how did this whole experience feel it must be overwhelming and <laughs> It's been unlike anything I ever thought would ever happen, you know. Yeah. And I think with the with publishing your novel, it's all new. You you don't know what it will be like and what it will feel like. But working with Sarah Jessica has been so wonderful because she is such a thoughtful reader and she's so detailed in her observations and in her thoughts about it and that it's made the process so much more personal than I thought it would be. And in some ways, like when you're working on your project, you it's it's what you care about the most and you're you really care about the characters and it's like your precious little thing, you know? And then it's impossible to think that anyone else would will match that kind of care that you've given to it. But then in working with Sarah Jessica for the past few well, actually over a year now or a year now, I've been so grateful that it does feel like, oh no, this is this is a story that she genuinely cares about and I'm just so lucky that I can work with her in in bringing it to readers. Thank you so much Fatima for telling us all about this book. Thank you. um, It's a place for us. Go pick it up out in June and thank you. Thank you. It's so great to get to meet you. 